क्या वे आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट आवर डिस्कशन ऑन चैप्टर फोर्टीन विच इज स्ट्रक्चरल वार्स एंड देर इज दिस इज इन कंटिन्यूएशन टू द डिस्कशन ऑफ वार it i i hope this will not be that difficult to understand however an essential in term uh, chapter in terms of application uh this because as we know structural var is also widely applied in the in research and in econometric arena so welcome to this new chapter um structural vars and the difference with var is in var we had to uh, in, uh, we had to specify beta not which led to the estimation of other parameters uh, with a strict lower triangular recursive structure um, on the other hand in structural var this model alleviates the problem of imposing that uh, seems proposed recursive structure uh, on the model by specifying the models motivated by recent economic theories so basically structural var has um, three types of uh, four types of restrictions uh, through which instead of the strict recursion or strict restriction um, uh, recursive restriction we can have short run restrictions long run restrictions applied on our var for uh, the model specification we can combine both of the restrictions or we can use sign restriction now in terms of specification a general structural var model where all variables are endogenous uh, basically by uh, saying that i mean remember the spillovers tabled dilemmas spillovers equity indices they are all endogenous that is nothing that is alien to that particular variable structure all are equities now if with equities we bring in bond the bonds might become an exogenous variable so if all variables are endogenous then the equation uh, is represented with beta not yt which is a vector where i equals 1 to rho beta 1 yt minus 1 beta i yt minus i which is a matrix plus ut is a vector which is a vector of structural shocks um each shock is so ut is id with zero mean and uh, d diagonally uh, standard deviation is represented by the diagonal elements one important feature is that each shock here is independent of the other shock so the covariance of ut with itself is zero an example can be a prototype macroeconomic model where we have uh, output um, aggregate supply so we have output um, interest rate um then price and money right so let us see which what is meant by each equation first of all if we are to take the log difference of the price with the is lag or which is what we mean uh, what we are trying to say here is that the log difference should represent returns equals beta 1 our first coefficient um, to log of output minus uh, uast which is uh, representing aggregate supply <coughs> equation then then is equation is uh, or um output uh, where log of output equals return uh no, sorry log of output equals interest rate minus log of the price returns minus uist the residual this is the aggregate supply residual this is the interest uh, rate residual i think yeah then money demand Uh, compared to price log of money minus um, well log rho rho t uh, log pt which is price money minus price should give you the demand actually so um, the log difference gives demand so log of output minus interest rate umdt and here log of money supply itself so interest is supply a is aggregate supply 
uh, the CIS is income sub, uh, interest or income supply I'm not sure anything it is be money demand and money supply beta I are positive for all structural shocks UAS UIS UND UMS where UMS is exogenous specification uh, and with var 1 uh, or rho equals 1 is first look into this equation okay what do we see here y equals uh, log of so first off we are gonna look into the equations here and we are gonna set uh, our first we're gonna set what do we have here we have P we have P price we have so 3 and 1 so log of output with P equals 1 the log of output is 1 beta naught where this is 1 and beta 1 is associated because well if we are to find P here this is the P's equation beta 1 will go down here right so 1 0 minus 1 by beta 1 Mm, the question is y minus right 1 minus beta 1 uh, because there is a log difference here the sign is coming from there so minus 1 by beta 1 or and 0 1 0 minus 1 by beta 1 Low, or uh, because we are gonna look into the residual here. So basically, this has log rho t log rho t minus one should be negative. If that is minus then the minus sign comes on beta 1 yeah 1 minus beta 1 because this is UAS we are representing the residual <coughs> okay then comes ne next equation which is which has what which has output interest rate price so output interest rate price and UIS interest income sorry output income income supply IS is income um, and so IS we are to find what we have to find UIS if I take that here so we have minus beta 2 or uh, minus minus plus UIS here obviously and this one here then you have one mm, and uh, obviously beta 2 comes with UIS so 1 by beta 2 uh, in, in, in OOT this we are representing by 1 by beta to beta, beta 2 indeed 1 by beta 2 then RT because beta 2 has been taken here or divided with beta 2 this becomes 1 and uh, this becomes minus 1 because the minus minus uh, because there is a minus on, on top of it and because UIS has minus this one has minus we have to think UIS as positive so this is positive uh, but there is a minus so that we can mix it negative uh, which is PT PT minus PT by PT minus 1 so minus 1 and uh, empty in terms of empty there is nothing so that's 0 that makes sense now because there is a sign for UAS so beta 1 gets the sign here 
there's a sign for us beta 2 gets the sign however minus minus becomes plus money demand umd uh, and what do we have we have um, this equation m rho we have ot and we have rt so beta 3 looking into beta 3 uh, is as it is beta 3 minus beta 4 beta 3 minus beta 4 then comes what does that make sense mm, because this one has minus beta 1 I think my previous this uh, well, explanation is correct we had minus beta 1 okay 1 minus 1 minus beta 1 because log of OT 0 minus log of Rho T log of Rho T 0 and beta 1 is uh, so log of Rho T then RT 0 then log of Rho T divided by beta 1 log of Rho T divided by beta 1 minus so that is minus log of O T we have OT, RT, ROT. So log of OT by beta 2, 1 by beta 2, RT, 1, and minus log of ROT. Okay, fine. Beta 2, RT, this one divided by beta 1, 1 minus beta 1. Minus beta 1. OT, RT, log of OT, so and then comes beta 3 log of OT mm, beta 3 log of OT uh, minus beta 4 RT minus beta 4 RT OT, RT and uh, ROT empty log of empty minus log of PT so becomes uh, ROT empty right ROT OT RT then ROT MT so beta 3 beta 4 we also we have ROT MT minus ROT so we have ROT which is plus 1 then minus MT which is minus 1 because MT minus ROT we have to take sides change the side then becomes ROT plus positive MT minus negative and exogenous is 1 so we can represent this as 0 so beta 1 on the other hand is 0 0 beta inverse 0 0 minus 1 beta naught is contemporaneous effect of shocks of it beta 1 captures the dynamic model well beta naught is contemporaneous shocks beta 1 capturing the dynamic model so we had we just have to uh, so beta 1 how do we determine beta 1 hmm beta 1 not uh, is contemporaneous effect of shock beta 1 captures the dynamic so we are looking for uh, y t minus i right so beta 1 inverse represented pt and in the next row in the place of 1 we had pt right price so this one represents coefficient for pt and this is also pt so these two remains this is pt and this is pt so this is beta 1 which is the coefficient for pt price and uh, nothing else that's why we have the occurrence wherever pt was located we are just taking them an alternative representation of equation one is commonly adopted uh, in as var is to define the standardized random variable um, so standardized structure shock ut by root over d we are familiar with that root over, over d contain, contains standard deviation on the diagonal so we know in root over d generally we take d square for dividends so root over d is uh, we know uh, standard deviations 
on the diagonal uh, d is a, a diagonal squared so e is it is equal to u t by 2 d is equal to 0 standard deviation the diagonal and so when we squared z t we had these variance uh, we had this decomposed structure which is root over d and uh, root over d this portion root over d multiplied to e u2 uh, when root over d inverse multiplied to exported well of u2 then we transposed portion u2 transpose root over d inverse yeah, root over d transpose Inver the inverse is transpose so when we multiply them we have root over d inverse u t u t becomes d because the covariant uh, basically the squared residuals are located diagonally the residuals diagonally we have these variances located so when we are talking about variances that represent that is represented by d and obviously this thing comes in so ultimately these two becomes d inverse and d so d inverse and d crosses out and we are left with identity matrix so we see standardized structural shock itself has zero mean and identity variance that is proven here so uh, this is this has zero mean and identity variance and so when we use standardized structural shock uh, standard deviation shock so standardized structural shock in our question instead of ut we can write uh, because you know z is equal to u by root over d you instead of u we can write root z root over d shocks here are one standard deviation shocks by definition an increase in the shock is standard deviation uh, is an increase um, in the standardized structure shock so here because as shocks are one standard deviation shocks if the value goes up for this element here that means the system has increased standardized structure shocks so these we incorporate in our equation and we have beta i beta naught yt minus i reduced from approach indeed plus z root over d by beta naught uh, and from previous uh, chapter we know that beta i beta naught is the lag parameter so uh, is the autoregressive parameter so phi i y t minus i and this is you know structural residual as we know this is structural variance or we can say structural residual z uh, root over d beta naught or s z t right we are also familiar with that SZT. Uh, so VT or SZT. S is equal to root over D by beta naught. Reduce from distribution vector. <coughs> so from the properties of ZT, as we know, the standardized structure shock has zero mean and in identity uh, variance. Obviously, our structural residual or structural variance should have a uh, structural residual have zero mean and S identity as transpose which left, uh, leaves us with S as transpose which is omega variance covariance matrix so the residuals variance is variance covariance matrix so it has distribution with zero mean and variance covariance matrix unlike structural shocks which are orthogonal because in structural shocks variances it was identity matrix and the variances are located diagonally so structural shocks are orthogonal the structural residual is not orthogonal since v is not necessarily a diagonal matrix see uh, so structural shock is a diagonal matrix so because you know we had to represent structural shocks with diagonal elements but v is not a diagonal matrix the dynamics in the reduced form approach in terms of lag operator hence is can be represented with uh, yt phi i yt minus uh, 1 on 1 so basically taking vt 
in one side we take the dynamics on the left hand side 1 minus 5 1 L yt vt or the lag parameter phi l yt now lag of yt is equal to yt minus k so phi l yt equals vt phi l itself is uh, what identity matrix minus phi 1 l minus phi 12 square or phi l inverse yt can be written as phi l inverse vt now phi l inverse itself is moving average parameter vt so we just converted the autoregressive parameter to moving average parameter so psi naught psi 1 l psi 12 square and we know that psi naught is identity matrix i n that we applied in previous chapter right so psi naught is identity matrix i n essential in our discussion in chapter 13 Mm, the effect of a shock in VT on the future time but dependent variable. So this is very important that whenever we are doing the recursion, recursive algorithm to convert our autoregressive parameters to moving over each parameters, we need to remember the first sign is identity matrix. Okay. So the effect of a shock or we can do psi 1 is i then psi 2 equals we can start with psi 2 so we can alter the equation slightly here <coughs> now effect of a shock in structural residual on the future time path of a dependent variable yt yt plus 1 yt plus 2 so from a future very uh the, i mean future time path independent variable the uh if ha it, those have effects so what we are talking about is effect of one shock assuming there is a shock in the residual on the future time path of the dependent variables so these variables will have such residuals shocks on that those residuals are respectively n by n parameter matrices psi naught psi one psi two moving average parameters so moving average parameters represent shocks on our structural residuals a bivariate var of output and prices so let's look into a var equation So if we were to look into one uh, example, we are talking about a VAR2 model when there is output and price variables are scaled by 400. We have our mean, our autoregressive parameter phi1 and autoregressive parameter phi2. Remember uh, phi's and mu's are always square matrix, they are not vectors. So the first thing we learned is who are vectors and who are not. Our residual is a vector, indeed. Um, our uh, dependent variable is a vector and the coefficient can be vector too, but coefficients are squares. Uh, no, I'm sorry, coefficients are squares. They're not never vectors. And hence, autoregressive and moving average parameters are also matrices. Variance covariance matrix is a square matrix. The first the, uh, VMA is psi naught, uh, which is identity matrix, and the next is psi 1, which uh, we will estimate later, which is estimated from the recursive algorithm with the help of phi 1. If this, then psi 2, then psi 3. These are the shocks on the residuals. These are the amount of shocks the residuals receive in the future time path. So we see the shocks on V1T for log of because I1 coming on is affecting the uh, affecting V1T. These are the shocks on V1T for output. Then the shocks on V2T. But like this, then shocks on from sigma 3 are getting shocks on V3T. So these are the shocks we have. The effects of non-orthogonal shocks. Okay, another important thing is 
Our standard test structure shocks are orthogonal, while uh, orthogonalized well, our standard structure residual is non-orthogonal. The effects and the effects of non-orthogonalized shocks Vt So the effects of non-orthogonalized shocks, the effects are signs. The moving, the moving average parameters are the effects. So the effects of non-orthogonalized shocks, Vt on um, output and price is bivariate VAR model uh, in bivariate VAR model of output and price is the figure right so what the figure represents is the effects of the moving average parameters of non orthogonalized shocks v's on output and price so cumulating these moving average matrices express the effects of vt on the level of the variables so when we accumulate that those all of these uh, effects or the size uh, or the moving average matrices that represents the level in quarter that represents the levels of the variables for an horizon of h is equal to 40 quarters the contemporaneous short run effect at h is equal to zero shocks are given by identity matrix so the long run effects h is equal to 40 are computed with the maximum psi i psi 0 to 40 with a we can represent these with a loop function we can calculate this moving over each parameters correspond to the last element of the figure the link between a var in equation 3 and the structural model in equation 4 is important in practice because it is a var that is commonly estimated at the first stage of the s modeling but this initial estimation causes a problem since the var generates, generates non-orthogonalized shocks vt so though we are uh, calculating var in the very first stage which is yt uh, summation of which is this equation so at the very first stage we are estimating this equation but this equation gives us non-orthogonalized structure shocks but you see the importance of this because non-orthogonalized structure shocks also capture the effects so you can forecast using your moving average parameter this is how we forecast our uh, uh, I mean the shocks that we are expecting ahead so generally we find the commonly estimated uh, commonly estimate the var in the first stage of s var sexual var modeling but this initial estimation causes a problem since the var generates non orthogonalized shocks that are not the standardized structural shocks the problem is addressed at the second stage of s var now modeling so the problem is addressed in the second stage of s bar modeling where identification of the structural shocks so we identify now we identify the structural shock z's from the bar shocks that is achieved through the imposition of restriction in the model in practice it means estimate estimates of structural parameters beta naught beta one to beta rho and d in equation need to be identified from the estimates of var so we had equation 2 and we have equation 3 so we need to represent equation 2 which was we need to identify the parameters of equation 2 from the autoregressive equation y equals so from this equation we need to estimate back these parameters so we know that v equals z root over d by beta naught so if you know beta naught if you know d you can find z 
or if you know even s you can find z that is a relationship so from non orthogonalized you can find orthogonalized shocks but not but also you need to identify you need to find these by estimating this so that is what is meant by the line <coughs> because it is these structural parameters that represent effects of ZT on YT. So we are interested to find the standardized structural shocks. The forces of restrictions are used to achieve this identification from equation 2 to equation 1 from the autoregressive to the actual one where we have standardized structural shock. First of all, short run restrictions. Imposing zero restrictions in equation 2 well, the actual equation on the matrix beta naught it represents the contemporaneous relationship between the variables in in yt the seems recursive model uh, approach imposes a recursive structure on the short run parameters so the contemporaneous matrix beta naught is restricted to be lower triangular as before we are familiar with this so this is short run restriction the model imposes following short run ordering so the ordering is interest rate, money, output, price and output. Example, the Kim and Rubini non-recursive model where we have what y uh, equals interest rate, money, price, output, oil price, federal uh, uh, monetary policy and exchange rate. And the shocks here represent standardized structure shocks on money supply, on money demand, on prices, on output, on the oil price, on the monetary policy, on exchange rate. The contemporaneous matrix here is just like before, we need to find Z. So for interest rate, for each equation, we need to find Z and uh, doing all those calculations we can find 1 minus beta 1 2 0 0 minus beta 1 5 minus beta 1 7 you can ask why that is uh, basically can, uh, coming from the equation we need to have a look detailed look into the equation and location of the parameters in each equation and uh, representing this equation I mean solving just like before we have seen solving one equation, uh, one structural shock, uh, identifying one beta coefficient parameter, one parameter we, we solving the equation uh, where we just take change sides, you know, and this one is done in terms of equation one. So solving we have this and as we see that Here, beta naught is a non-triangular matrix. The model has a non-recursive structure, so it doesn't have a recursive structure. The absence of zero cells in the last row, obviously there, we just saw that zero last row is full of values. So, but absence of zero cells, there is no zero in the last row, right? absence of zero cells in the last row of beta naught shows exchange rate is jointly affected by all the shocks now translate the short run restriction given in beta naught to orthogonalized standard stru uh, structural shocks rewrite the moving average representation in terms of orthogonalized shocks so we know that how to do that so we take the moving average representation and we know v equals uh, z root of z root d by beta naught so we just put the value in, in place of so v we keep on doing that and we also note that we know that root over d by beta naught e equals s so we do that and what do we have we actually have interestingly uh, impulse responses here so the n by n matrix is uh, then psi1s, psi2s, 
represent orthogonalized one standard deviation impulses. This is non-orthogonalized from non-orthogonalized shock. We derive orthogonalized impulses as well as orthogonalized shocks. Once beta naught and D are specified, S is determined from S is equal to. So once we solve for beta naught and D, we find S root over d by beta naught suggesting short run restriction can be can be imposed either on beta naught or on s directly or even d <coughs> the restrictions on beta naught controls contemporaneous relationship between the variables whereas restri restrictions on s control the contemporaneous relationship between the variables and the structural shocks right so not only the variables but the contemporaneous relationship of uh, between the variables and the structural shocks is controlled by s both are common in s bar models finally if beta naught is triangular then beta inverse and s are both triangular resulting in the equivalence of the two methods for imposing short run restrictions so remember as beta naught becomes is triangular beta 1 inverse and s both becomes triangular because s is derived from beta naught inverse and beta naught inverse obviously should be triangular it's just an inverse matrix so there is an example as for model with short run restrictions we take two variables variables are scaled by 400 structure shocks represent real and nominal shocks respectively and the restriction is that nominal shocks do not affect change in output in the short run. So this is S, 0 representing short run restrictions. Short run restriction here, 0 is short run restriction. The matrix also allows that real shocks have a short run negative impact on change in price equal to minus 1. Look into that non-diagonal element have a look into the non-diagonal element real shocks have a short run negative impact on change in price delta y2 equal to minus 1 so delta y1 delta y2 using the vma parameter matrix as in example 2 by video uh, so if we just do vma parameter matrices in example 2 you see that there is a negative impact on change in price right because output and price now shocks are given in figure for horizon of h is equal to 40 quartiles by construction shocks so real shocks real and nominal shocks this is a if this is a v matrix real and nominal real and nominal no shock real shock on prices So policy and prices, see policy effect on prices, by construction <coughs> the short run effects at h is equal to 0 are represented by s right obviously um, with z2t having no contemporaneous effect so z1t z2t uh, Z2T having no contemporaneous effect of Y1T and Z1T having a negative impact on Y2T. Very simple. So Z1T, Z2T, Z1T, Z2T, Z2T Y1T and Y2T. So Z1T having Z2T doesn't have, uh, nominal shock doesn't have any effect on Y1T 
and the real shock have a one negative impact on y1 t that is the decision right very simple in the in the long run at h is equal to 40 both shocks have non zero effects on the variables where the long run variable psi 1 s looks like this psi i s in the long run this is the effect of v right on y if these all these are positive so all of them has shocks on the variable so z1 and z orthogonalized these are all orthogonalized shocks so that was short run restriction now we're gonna look into long run restriction So, in a nutshell, in the previous example, what we said that if in a bivariate case, S, uh, the value of S represents short run restrictions, uh, where in S matrix we have the Z's located for y, Y's. So, Z1 and Z2 for Y1, Z1 and Z2 for Y2, and Z1 and Z2 the standardized structure shocks which are affecting the uh, variables um, in other other words z1 and z2 uh, is actually um, capturing the effect the shocks coming from the moving average parameter psi1 psi2 so these are the um, though we have gone up to h is equal to 40 horizons you know we still consider them as short run restrictions <clears throat> now long run restrictions the next way to uh, so we check effects of orthogonalized shocks okay so z start, start structural standard structural shocks so z the next way to impose restriction is to constrain impulse responses in the long run to have values that are motivated by economic theory. So we need to restrict the impulse responses. The following example exploits the prototype theoretical model presented earlier. Long run equilibrium requires prices, there is no price difference and the model reduces to from uh, we remove all the prices and the uh, rest of the model without the prices. What we have here is first let's start with output um, UAST. Okay, so um, log OT. So 0 equals what was the equation here? How we are adjusting the model? Mm, this is page 10. We need to toggle between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, let's go to 7, see because this is 0 we have log OT equals UAS or the residual only represents OT and beta 1 kind of turns to 0 too because this is 0. Then comes R, RT equals UIS beta 1 by beta 2 UAS. So this one is 0 and we have beta 2 RT and log OT equals UAS. So we have represent RT here all right um, RT becomes well you just take beta 2 down and you have RT and UAS so you represent RT equals UAS which is positive minus this log OT equals UAS um, minus and the beta 2 is down UAS divided by 2 very simple <clears throat> so we have in the equation we solve for OT 
which equals you as we used OT to find RT putting this to 0 and then the third equation is log PT equals U MST money supply last beta for UIS and blah 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 so what is happening here is that log of MT minus log of PT uh, so basically we take PT now log of PT and we change every uh, sides and we also use the value of UAS and money uh, demand is there indeed and UIS we both use the residuals and we end up having this is a pen and paper solution actually um, you end up having this equation that's so so the trick here the only thing to remember here is that in long run our price differences become zero with that in mind we find ot rt pt mt that's all did we find ot mt pt rt before yes but there was log parameters logarithm there this time is also logarithm there yeah but there was pt as well hmm. And MT is equal to MST, exogenous. These equations impose a number of restrictions on the long run relationships between variables. So number of restrictions are imposed on the long run relationships between the variables and structural shocks. To impose long run restrictions on the orthogonalized impulse responses, assume that all variances in Y are expressed in first difference. So we want to actually impose long run restrictions on the orthogonalized impulse responses which are standardized structural shocks. We need to assume that all variances are expressed in the first differences. If F is a long run matrix, the long run impulse responses are S was a short run restriction S plus I1 S plus I2 S plus I3 S C psi1 was 0 um, equals I1 S with psi1 equals identity psi1 psi2 psi3 from equation 7 the way to restrict impulse responses in the long run is to impose restriction on F so S is equal to, we are familiar with the uh, equation is that um, S is equal to, uh, well, no, we are not familiar with that. Basically, we use Psi 1S all the time, Psi IS, which equals to, I think, V. Psi IS, no, that was the impulse response function. And so in long run restriction, we just do F divided by Psi I. Psi I or Phi 1 F is the long run restriction. So we impose restriction on F without regressive parameter. S is now expressed in terms of long run matrix F weighted by the sum of the VAR parameters in equation Phi 1. So vector to regression parameter are used are multiplied with f uh, and vector to regression parameter represents the weights uh, of represents the weights coming from the sum of the var parameters. So this is the summation of all vector vector to regression parameters. Shows that S is now expressed in terms of long run matrix F f weighted by the sum of bar parameter in the special case of no dynamics there is no distinction between short run and long run which is for all param all parameters of autoregressive autoregression of r is 1 so psi i is 0 for all i 
yeah so that is basically in case when there is not regressive parameter there is no dynamics uh, there is no short or long run you need to have auto regression moving average both to be able to impose short and long run consider the bivariate uh, example 14.7 consider the bivariate as well model of the logarithm of output and logarithm of prices except now nominal shocks do not affect output in the long run real shocks are uh, just like before real and nominal nominal do not represent uh, uh, i mean affect y1t the long run is devised as this now instead of s we write f and our all our autoregressive parameters is i minus phi 1 minus phi 2 s is equal to phi 1 multiplied to f gives us the cumulative response show that shocks have uh, so these are long run so s is used to restrict impulse responses in the long run by imposing restriction on f so we are imposing a restriction on imposing the restriction on f and restricting uh, impulse responses in the long run so where this is the our restriction the cumulative impulse responses show that both shocks have short run effects at h is equal to 0 given by s which the long run effects are given by f with the effect of z2t on y1t approaching z2t is basically approaching its long run value 0 so long run value is 0 short run is s 51f and we see that it is approaching its long run value 0 which is this equation the effects of orthogonalized shocks zt on log of t and log of t so this was example 7 then we use the same concept in the next example the Blankert and Quali model So another example is the Blankert and Coa model 1989 a bivariate macroeconomic model consisting of growth rate in output and the unemployment rate. So you have growth rate on output and the unemployment rate growth rate is scaled by 400. The one standard deviation structural shocks correspond to uh, aggregate supply and aggregate demand so the shocks represent aggregate supply and aggregate demand <coughs> the model has a recursive long run structure with long run parameter matrix f specified as you see um, <coughs> y1 y2 two equations aggregate supply and aggregate demand in the first equation aggregate demand um, equation for autoregressive um, is a var2 model I guess hmm. so aggregate demand has no long run effect on output and uh, in the second equation aggregate demand has some effect on output the model emphasizes on zero restrictions in the long run that is one equation with f being specified as this when theoretically we have defined that aggregate demand has no uh, long run effect on output and we use this um, f <coughs> to find s phi 1 f and that helps us to identify uh, i mean estimate our equation with long run restrictions or a specify our equation with the long run restriction this is this restriction specifies our parameters right our autoregressive parameter phi 1. The Rapash model emphasizes a long run restriction in conjunction with cross 
equation restriction. This is another example. Wrapper specifies um, okay so wrapper specifies a four variable model as we I have just discussed um, consisting of the first differences of the logarithm of prices the logarithm of real stock prices the interest rate uh, and the logarithm of output the one standard deviation shocks are presented in with Z's, uh, which are nominal shocks, portfolio shocks, aggregate demand shocks, and aggregate supply shocks. The model has a non recursive long run structure with long run parameter matrix F given by uh, F equation, where this is a long run structure with a long run parameter matrix F. All shocks affect, as we can see from the long run parameter matrix F, mm. all shocks affect nominal prices in the long run. All shocks affect nominal prices in the long run. Uh, zero here, the zero means nominal shocks have no long run effect on the real stock price. Um, and nominal uh, and interest rate so all shocks affect nominal prices in the long run nominal shocks have no real effect uh, no long run effect on stock price and interest rate and only supply shocks affect output in the long run so which shock is affecting what variable um, one more time all of the shocks are affecting the prices and nominal shocks uh, ZNT is the nominal shock uh, has no effect on uh, stock price and interest rate whereas uh, aggregate supply shock don't have any effect on any other variables except for the long run output and after that the restriction we find is 0 0.025 uh, doing this mathematics imposes a long run relationship between real stock price and interest rate. So we see that uh, real stock price and interest rate relationship so that uh, F22 so if our value uh, so just one example uh, if we have F22 equals 0 0.025 which means uh, well, there is a long run relationship between real stock price and interest rate. So that F2 is 10% uh, permanent increase requires um, stock pr uh, permanent increase in stock price would require a 2.5% permanent increase in interest rate to maintain long run portfolio equilibrium. Beautiful. You see, so if you have a value 0 0.22, which would mean uh, 0 0.25 which would mean uh, um, well obviously you will multiply that with 100 and you'll get with 2.5 percent which simply means a permanent increase in interest rate by 2.5 percent will also cause an increase in the long uh, stock price in the long run okay so that was a repush model and in a way we have learned how we can interpret interpret how one variable is affecting another variable in the long run and how shocks are working as an intermediary um, causing the effect from one to the other so shocks are basically the coefficients short run and long run restriction implied together Another way to impose structure on the model is to combine the short run and the long run restrictions. Imposing constraints on contemporaneous impulse responses and on their long run behavior to specify structure of matrix S in terms of these restrictions. So what we are doing, we are imposing constraints on the impulse responses, contemporaneous impulse responses and their long run behavior impulse responses basically define uh, 
the effect of one uh, uh, how much a variable is being affected by its own lag and uh, the lags of other variables to specify structure of matrix S in terms of their restrictions. So for example, we will look into another example which real structural shocks uh, uh, this is 14.10 if we look back into the example which was well two pages earlier mm, just give me one second number seven before that we had Well, if you are to uh, refer back to a previous example, an older example, um, real structural shocks Z1T, uh, when we had structural shocks and nominal shocks basically, uh, structure, real structural shocks and nominal shocks, as far model with short run restriction, which was two page up. So if we are looking back into this uh, short run restriction example when we had real structural shock uh, and nominal uh, structural shock on log OT uh, on output and prices we were talking about this shock. Uh, so now we are referring to this and we had we told that the short run effects uh, uh, the short run effects at H0, H is equal to 0 period is uh, short run is, is represented by S with Z1T having no contemporaneous effect, uh, sorry with Z2T having no contemporaneous, contemporaneous effect on nominal shock and uh, well Z2T is the nominal shock having no contemporaneous effect on log OT and log, log uh, price um, and Z1T having a negative effect on uh, logarithm of output okay so sh a nominal shock real shock and nominal shock um, and real shock having a negative effect one more time real shock having a negative effect on output and the nominal shock having no contemporaneous effect on price uh, and that we recovered from our impulse responses I mean uh, our impulse response function becomes this which suggests that how orthogonalized shocks are affecting the orthogonalized shocks how the orthogonalized shocks are affecting uh, the or Z's are affecting our variables in the short run right so now referring this we'll come back to our current discussion two page down where we say that short run nominal uh, real structural shocks do not affect uh, we say that the real structural shocks do not affect price at what y to t in short run nominal structural um, shocks well um, real and nominal what we said that nominal do not affect price in y1t in the long run um, uh, z2t did not affect price in the long run and we had a negative effect the short run restriction is s210 which means the nominal do not affect uh, the real do not affect uh, output in the short run to derive the long run restrictions from the previously specified s we uh, well draw an equation of f which is s because we know s is equal to 51 f autoregressive parameter so we just take that equation and turn it around and it becomes f equals s phi inverse Sorry, on inverse so from that uh, previously we estimated uh, the value of s and we used s to um, 
estimate psi 1 s the moving of a uh, the impulse response function now we uh, use the same thing we use the same equation actually but instead of psi 1 we use phi 1 inverse because we know that moving average is inverse of uh, autoregressive is inverse of moving average so we basically take an inverse of the function and the long run restrictions become so <coughs> so from here we have uh, according to uh, combining short and long run relationship we have the long run uh, restriction now we know that from previous model uh, s21 was zero so against zero uh, we are putting uh, we are putting f12 and f12 is 511 s12 plus 512 s22 which is pro we just replaced um, our equation 511 s12 plus 512 s22 with the uh, estimated results and this is the equation we derive um, so we take it further in which phi ij is a pertinent element of um, auto inverse of autoregressive function f phi 1 solving this equation for s22 yields an expression for s in terms of s11 and s12 given by s11 s12 which remains as it is doesn't change zero from the previous the first s for model short run restrictions and 511 and 512 just similar to beta not beta 1 uh, we divide them we solve um, the equation for s22 so s22 equals 511 divided by 512 s12 just solving this equation this is what we derived the fourth element the accumulated impulse responses are given for s11 which equals 2 and s12 which equals 1 the short run effects at h equals 0 given by s and long run at h is equal to 40 are now we get back to our impulse response function psi i and um, we use the previously estimated psi i but now we multiply with the currently estimated s that we have just derived and uh, with that we have a new impulse response uh, estimation if we increase the moving average parameter should that should mean as we increase the moving average parameter the non-diagonal element f12 so real and nominal shock the nominal shock on price will tend to zero asymptotically it will be closing to zero that we can find because as we increase our psi more and more we take higher order moving average we see this particular value will continue to drop so what's the difference from the first short run restriction we use the same equation but instead of uh, moving average parameter we uh, estimated the autoregressive parameter and from autoregressive parameter um, for this particular element out of all the elements there is no any reason to look into this element we can just uh, you know look into any of the elements but it is easier for us to look into the um, third element because that was zero in a, on a in our previous example to solve for s22 and we have uh, s uh, we are putting restrictions um, in this particular element we have the values of s11 and s12 um, which are given to us so basically we just uh, use all these values and we find the value for s12 from this and we replace the the finding we kind of get back to uh, a new impulse response function but the question is if this is different from what we found in the previous impulse response function yes it is uh, certainly completely different than our previous impulse response function that was a short run effect we have seen short run effect is much higher compared to this long run effect so 
the effects of in this figure we now represent the effects of orthogonalized shocks z on log um, on both of the parameters output and prices with short run and long run restrictions combined so that was um, short and long run restriction an example of short and long uh, the, the trick here is not to rely on uh, moving over each parameter but to find an autoregressive parameter solve the equations with the help of autoregressive parameter then going back again to the impulse response function so example 14.11 is the gali model in 1992 gali model consists of growth rate of output the change in nominal interest rate the real interest rate and the growth rate of the real money the one standard deviation structure shocks were aggregate supply shocks, money supply shocks, money demand and aggregate demand shocks. The restrictions are in short run, uh, money supply shock and money demand shock uh, do not have any contemporaneous effect on output. Uh, so hence S12 and S13 are zero where Sij is the relevant entry of S in the equation which is psi i inverse f or s is equal to phi 1 f basically is the same thing that we have been talking about we are just putting restriction on s12 and s13 from the theories short run money now in terms of short run output output does not enter the monetary policy rule contemporaneously for that b21 equals 0 where bij represent the element of beta naught our recursive uh, beta coefficient to derive the effect of this restriction on s we need to rewrite beta naught as half of the total remember the uh, uh, well decomposed decomposed equation decomposition equation we just take half of it so root over d beta naught is root over d divided by s so restriction becomes 0 because beta 2 1 is 0 root, root over d s where s 2 1 is now pertinent element of s inverse for d 1 1 for d 1 1 is equal to 0 it follows s 2 1 equals 0 now this equation represents a non-linear restriction on all of the n elements of S which in theory can be solved for any Sij because S21 is 0 meaning uh, resulting in S now having um, S11 as it is S21 equals 0 um, sorry S, um, S11 S12 equals 0 obviously that's why S21 0 because they are non-diagonal elements they are 0 S13 is another restriction um, that we are imposing uh, from the short run discussion S13 is also 0 so S12 S21 S13 these three equals 0 and with that we draw our um, short run output equation now long run output equation output is assumed to operate at its natural rate so that nominal shocks zms zmd and zad have no long run effects these long run restrictions imply that f1 to f13 and f14 should be zero in the long run matrix f To derive the effect of these restrictions on S, we need to rewrite S is equal to phi 1 F um, or F is equal to phi 1 inverse S that implies well F12, F13, F14, these are 0. So we just we can present this in terms of equation or uh, yeah we can present this in terms of equation F12 with F12 what we have. Um, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 3, so equation um, 1, variable, uh, so this is the restriction where we have um, variable 1, equation 1, variable 2, equation 2 variable to equation 3 variable to equation 4 variable to obviously this is for 
the same variable, equation 1, variable 3, equation 2, variable 3, equation 3, variable 3, equation 4, variable 3. For each variable, we have one equation. Equation 1, variable 4, equation 2, variable 4, equation 3, variable 4, equation 4, variable 4. So, phi ij is an element of phi 1 inverse, recalling that recalling uh, that s12 equals s13 uh, equals 0 from short term restriction s22 obviously because these are 0 uh, and so we just take things on the left hand side solve for s32 you know and uh, s42 because uh, s12 and s13 are 0 so quite simple the looking back into previous equation solving for s22 this is the equation we derive for s23 this is the equation we derive for s14 this is the equation we derive substituting the restrictions into s reduces the number of unknowns to 10 wow that's great so we have le less number of unknowns now s11 s24 s31 s32 s34 s41 s42 s44 so this was long run uh, and short run method in the Gali model combining both of these mod models. It seems a bit complicated because the in there is a lot of inherent math but they are just descriptive math. So there is no specific technicality. Restrictions are for you to decide on which one will have zero is for the questionnaire is for the question to have and there is no technique to decide on which one will have zero but we use them we present uh, our model uh, our s into equations uh, because we have the relationship basic reduced form relationship which is s is equal to phi 1 f and we solve for s using the information we have on phi 1 or f and so this is quite simple then comes sign restrictions um, so going back this has what we have been doing all along uh, whenever we talked about short run and long run restrictions quite simple in a recursive bivariate model consisting y1t and y2t the two ordering are identified by respective s matrices um, so if we have bivariate recursive bivariate model y1t and y2t so the shock on y1 so the contemporaneous relationship between y1 and y2 is represented with these where the triangular structure changes for y2 contemporaneous relationship between s y2 and y1 and these are non-diagonal elements uh, not a big deal in the first case a shock in y2t does not contemporaneously affect y1t while in the second case a shock in y1t does not contemporaneous contemporaneously affect on uh, uh, y2t so that's very simple explanation uh, of the matrices the choice of variable ordering hence s var model is based on the model that yields impulse responses with signs so we need to yield impulse responses with signs consistent with economic theory and basing on impulse responses with signs we select we decide on the choice of the variable ordering the sign restriction methodology is specifying s var represents generalization of this approach the strategy for choosing different variable ordering can be understood by defining the matrix with this so q is equal to cos um, q is equal to cosine of lambda minus sine lambda again sine lambda cos lambda well uh, the lambda values lie within 0 and pi this is orthogonalized uh, we, this is an orthogonal matrix q as q q transpose or q transpose q end up becoming an identity matrix isn't it so 
if you take an inverse of uh, transpose of it you multiply you get identity matrix that's why it's an orthogonal matrix so we can rewrite the structural variance as uh, root over dzt divided by beta naught or szt now we can bring in qq transpose in between szt and the beauty of the pro, uh, new thing is because it's an identity matrix it won't change anything what it will change is that we'll have a new element qzt and qzt if represented with omega t it represents a new set of standardized structural shocks so w omega t is now is a new set of in, from zt we gave birth to omega t which is a new set of standardized structural shocks that are also orthogonal because um, expected value of zt because zt is orthogonal the standardized structural shock which has identity matrix is variance hence omega t is orthogonal how we can prove it obviously just take it and multiply it with the inverse uh, which means qzt and qq transpose is orthogonal ZTZT transpose is orthogonal so omega t omega t transpose is orthogonal beautiful right <coughs> This new structural shock are simply a weighted average. So the new child shock <coughs> are simply a weighted average of the original structural shock ZT. Right? Since omega t equals Q Z T, we have an orthogonal Q and we have ZT matrix, a ZT vector. <coughs> if you multiply that, we end up with omega t's value. Uh, matrix multiplication, no big deal. Z1t, Z2t, Z1t, Z2t. It's minus, it's plus. So omega t is a vector which takes the shape of standardized structure shock vector Z1t. The two variable ordering given for the bivariate model are spatial cases. Now the two variable ordering given for the bivariate model in one are spatial cases of three. So now if we take our equation from the two variable ordering in um, our first equation where if you can remember we had the zero restriction in here the two variable ordering uh, for lower triangular matrix as in the ordering in one and in two so the lower triangular we take the lower triangular ordering isn't it we also mentioned in, in the very beginning uh, with Q transpose, multiply it with Q transpose and we end up with this uh, element by element multiplication um, S21 no sorry uh, a matrix multiplication we end up with SQ transpose matrix setting lambda equals 0 gives you the first ordering in the equation now you have um, well lambda equals 0 if you set lambda equals 0 you have give you the first ordering in equation 3 uh, whatever we are talking about yeah first ordering in equation 3 which is uh, structure shock equation where lambda is chosen so that s21 cosine of lambda minus s22 s21 cosine of lambda minus s22 sine lambda equals 0 right so this one if this is 0 structural shocks identified by choosing alternative value of lambda within the range 0 to lambda this method of generating alternative models so what are we doing here We are going to set lambda to 0 to get the ordering in equation 3 uh, to get our ordering. So we are choosing lambda hat so that in a in a manner so that this one is 0 and that is consistent with our equation 1 as well as what we were talking about y is y2 affecting y1 as y1 affecting so that's what we are talking about earlier so just keep this in mind 
see this is setting this to zero don't mind the discussion just mind the mathematics so we used y1 and y2's contemporaneous relationship restriction get code this one and now we are going to use y2 and y1's contemporaneous relationship uh, restriction to find to define this equation so first ordering was this this is the second ordering more generally other structural shocks are identified by choosing alternative values of lambda within the range so basically just change the lambda values within the range and find more ordering this method of generating alternative models using the orthogonal rotation sq transpose and selecting this those models that generate impulse responses uh, this different type of 0 to tau because what we will do here we will do we will run a replication a lot of iterations on this uh, and cause a lot of orthogonal rotations so we will randomly select many lambdas now what will happen if we randomly select a hundred thousand lambda if we, it will generate impulse responses consistent with economic theory and this process is known as sand restriction approach so generating uh, many so generating many lambdas the ones those models that are consistent with our economic theory uh, we just select those out and that process is sand restriction Canova, D. Nicolo and Pierceman provides an example for models greater than Two dimension Q is based on either given transformation or a household transformation. Okay, so sign restriction estimate uh, what are the steps? First, estimate a var and construct a v uh, construct VMA parameter. Obviously, that we know need psi y s lambda psi i compute s where s s transpose is v. So, up until that, we we with the help of psi we compute s and we compute. The structural shock draw a value of lambda from 0 to pi any with iteration okay put this in a loop and compute Q from this equation right so the loop will automatically continue to compute this compute a finite number of impulse responses mm, finite number of impulse responses with Q now we are doing we are finding q and uh, we have already found s psi i so we are going to find a compute we are going to compute a finite number of impulse responses and with q uh, and we, we are going to do rotation so our impulse response is not going to be psi i s now rather it will be psi i s q transpose and this is the rotating we are rotating continuously okay for our 10 hundred thousand loop so compute a finite number of impulse responses for quarterly data it is common to choose psi naught sq transpose psi 1 sq transpose psi 2 sq 2 psi 3 sq transpose where psi i matrices are obtained in step 1 indeed so we have s we have q transpose we have psi i okay so what is the game here the game is lambda which is within q and we have randomly select we are with a loop our lambda values are changing between 0 to pi maybe a hundred thousands time of all the impulses so we have many impulses now the correct sign will now look for the ones that has the correct sign and that will take the signs that uh, are consistent with our model that we uh, assumed right so whatever coming close to our theory we'll just take those and x we don't do the rest so repeat steps two to four and generate other models that satisfy this restriction select a final model from the set of candidate models according to some rules so example we have c output and price real shock and nominal shock sign 
is negative right imposing sign restriction that z1t has positive effect on y1t and a ne negative effect on y2t whereas z1 the 2t has a positive effect on both y1t and y2t so this is what we need to keep in mind then if there is just one we are going to do it for 100,000 damn that is 0.3 pi this is the equation the matrix used to generate impulse response gives us this so <coughs> compare the current figure with the short run figure you see we have the sign <coughs> satisfied right so we're going to compare this sq transpose figure with the short run restriction figure this figure okay um, the short run figure is equivalent to sitting tau is equal to zero so the initial figure is this and our estimated figure is this <coughs> this um, the, uh, despise both sets of impulse response functions are based on so though both sets of uh, IRFs are based on orthogonal shocks the first one the short run restriction has lam uh, lambda to be set zero so imposing sign restriction uh, based on lambda 0.3 pi and not zero we end up with these curves and we see how which of the curves are converging to the curve that we generated with short term restriction so this is very simple the one game here the just a single game to remember is that the rotation the rotation happens because of uh, lambda located in um, q transpose right and that defines our uh, impulse response newly which is psi i sq transpose right because uh, uh, or there's another relationship very important that our structure shock gave birth to a new structure shock from q transpose so omega t is q z t so both are orthogonal though whether uh, our structural shock is orthogonal omega is also orthogonal beautiful sign restriction um, this new structural shocks are simply a weighted average oh so we have discussed this now the next point next discussion estimation the parameters of s var um, reduce form estimation variance parameters maximum okay So there is um, quite a few discussion left. The parameters of structural var, which are theta equals s beta 1 to beta p in which s is equal to for short run restriction root over d by beta naught and for long run restriction f phi 1. The parameters can be estimated using iterative algorithm. Okay, estimation will come back after a uh, small interval. Thank you.